Hello, my name is Josh Atkinson, and you have once again stumbled upon my portrait painting YouTube channel. Today, I am going to continue going in this sort of expressive uh, style with um, a less dramatically lit source image, which is this one. We'll be seeing how I make this. Uh, this painting, again, forgive the glare, uh, this painting had a lot of discoveries about color and tone value, which I will discuss more in the time lapse, which I'm going to start right now. So this is the source image um, of Cloris Leachman. Also, apologies if you can hear the rain drops outside. I waited too long to record this. So now I'm... Oh, here's my uh, failed landscape. If you subscribe to my channel, you will see this failed landscape uh, at least twice more because for some reason it's just eluding me and I can't seem to give it up. It's the downside to becoming good at one genre of painting all this time doing portraits. I have, I've gotten really rusty when it comes to landscapes. But anyway, the past three videos that I posted were the three videos I did before this one, and as I said uh, in those videos, they were photos of friends of mine that were that featured very extreme lighting and very extreme emotional expressions because I want to, that's my favorite thing to paint right now. I'm developing my style that's very rough and textural, very expressive, very unblended expressive colors. Um, but you just can't find, like, there are only so many people that are going to give you a photo of themselves. So, um, so with this painting, the challenge was how do I keep all of the stylistic discoveries I've been making about not blending colors about creating the sense of movement through impasto and rough brush strokes. How do I bring that to a normal image, an image that has more conventional lighting, that has, um, a, a, she, she's got a smile, it's a, a gentle expression, it's nothing uh, jarring or, uh, uh, I don't know, disturbing. So I wanted to see if I could still move in this direction with this kind of image. And um, the big discoveries I made, A, were that, yes, I, I, I guess I could, um, but I also discovered that at the end of this painting there's like a big patch of blue right in her forehead. There's um, patches of orange and green. Even now you can see the, the green on the side of her face. And, and I just kind of left them, and I I made this discovery that as long as the tonal value is accurate to the to the subject, to the source image in this case, um, meaning like the blue was as light as it needed to be. If I was going for traditional realism, I would have painted her skin tone without, you know, blue and, and uh, green and whatever else. Um, but if it's the same tonal value, it actually doesn't disrupt your processing of it. You can leave colors there in a more pronounced way than they naturally occur, and I think it creates, oh boy, I'm going to use a big word, it creates a sense of verisimilitude. I may also be using that word incorrectly, which is one of the features I like to bring to YouTube, is just um, using words wrong, but I think verisimilitude means being of, like, I don't know, being of itself, like, the thing, like, it works, it creates a cohesiveness, it, cre it looks like it's, it belongs, um, yeah, like, it belongs. So even now you can see, like, I put a bit of this highlight on her forehead, it, it is a violet blue kind of cast. Her teeth are blue, I'm throwing these deep greens, these viridians, all over, and, and I'm kind of imposing them, but I also sort of see them, you know? I, 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 I think there's an opportunity for them. I, I blend them in to a degree, but the big takeaway from this painting was just that, like, I can go way wackier, and when I say I can go, I mean you can go, we can go, everybody can go way wackier with color if you just abide by tonal value. So yeah, now you're seeing this periwinkle cornflower kind of blue on her forehead and this very in intense green, you know, uh, on her chin and cheekbone and everything. 
if you saw someone with these colors on their face in real life, you would assume that they, that the shower was broken at the paintball, you know, um, pl place. I don't know if paintballs have, what do you call that, a studio? You call that a fort? I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't, I, I found this to be a very liberating experience. When you're developing your own style, when you, um, whether you've started with realism or, or you've skipped that altogether, to me it was important to get those foundational skills. But when you, you, you get to a point of, of being good at that and you might feel a little bored and you want to push the boundaries, test the limits, you know, you do it in, in every way that you can think of, color and brush strokes and, I don't know, maybe I'll start gluing found objects to my paintings or something. But, but it's just, it's just so much more satisfying. And I have to tell you, like, if you're nervous, because I spent a lot of time being nervous about doing paintings like this, leaving the brush strokes, leaving the colors so unblended and so unmuted, if you're nervous about taking stylistic risks, I can tell you from my experience, people are so much more interested in this. People, you know, they're polite about like, oh wow, you got, if you do like a realist painting and you really nail a portrait, they're supportive and polite and everything, but but you can hear in their voice they're not excited. And just to be encouraging for whatever it's worth to to anybody watching this video, it's hearing that excitement in someone's voice when they see their portrait or or another portrait that you've done in that style. It's just, it's really fulfilling. It's really encouraging. So I would just say, as I say in all of my videos now, uh, sally forth, soldier, soldier on. Go toward whatever your style is. Um, yeah, go crazy. So here's Chloris. Here's our final painting. It is a five by seven oil painting uh, on a, a canvas panel. So then that is how we arrived at this portrait of Cloris Leachman. Um, I'm not sure if I articulated it quite uh, quite the way that I meant during the time lapse, but what I'm talking about with like leaving blue, green, you know, an orange that doesn't, you know, clearly isn't natural to her skin tone, you know, uh, leaving them there, like it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be an issue with the the way that we process this image. It seems like a coherent, cohesive image, even though these colors don't happen normally on a human face because they're the appropriate tone value. This blue is not dissimilar from the shit, the, the, the reds and the peaches around it. Same for this orange, green over here even. It, it, it seems to be what I'm learning is that tone, light or dark, is more important than the specific color or chroma or whatever you want to call it that you that you use in the painting. So that was the big discovery with this one. As always, please do like and subscribe if you got something out of this. And please also leave comments about what you'd like to see me paint in the future or any questions you have. So um until next Monday, I will uh well I'll be painting. Hopefully you'll be doing something creative too, and I will see you then. Okay.